Hello everyone, welcome back to another Pokemon Bible study and movie review in Shady Oak Ministries. I'm of course Shady Oak and today we're going to be discussing the 16th movie in the Pokemon movie franchise, the movie Genesect and the Legend Awakened, the first movie to star and include not only an alternative form Pokemon, but a Mega Evolution Pokemon which was remarkably distinctive from the Mewtwo that we all know and remember from the first and technically fourth movies. But to each his own, I enjoyed it anyway, because of the themes we're about to discuss. So let's get right into it. Today we're going to be discussing the concept of mercy, and that of which, of course, being illustrated and demonstrated through the life of Jesus. If you could turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 26, we're going to be reading a fairly good chunk of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Now note the original and whole Sermon on the Mount was recorded in Matthew 5 through 7. But naturally, Jesus spoke from his ministry for what most historical people would assume is about three and a half years. So with this in mind, we need to note and recognize that just like with him, as a pastor myself, I know that you never uh, give the same message twice, the same sermon twice, but you are definitely bringing up points up over and over again because people need that repetition if they're going to catch the clear points that you're trying to communicate. So with the replay button being included for you guys, hopefully Jesus also had to use his alternative methods. And with this same message, but in a different format, so to speak, he gives the same point. Luke 6, 27. If you could join me there, I'll have it in the description below for you, but I encourage you to follow along in a separate tab or with your own copy. Jesus said this, I say unto you who hear, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And to him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give, every, give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even such sinners lend to as much as receive back. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind, ready, to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just also as your Father is merciful. Now this section of the Sermon on the Mount gives us a separate occasion to discuss the topic of mercy and note this, from God's perspective, that he is good to the evil and the good. So if we claim to follow him as Christians, we'll stand out the most when we act less normal and more merciful even to those who for all intents and purposes do not deserve it. This is what was made Jesus such a radical. Now note, the evil and the unthankful people are those to whom God shows the most mercy, so we should probably take clues from that as well. And he actually goes on in a separate account, but in the same life and ministry and recording, where he actually gives a parable and illustration of what forgiveness is like from God's perspective, how God feels that not only he's forgiven us, which is a reality, but also how he feels then how we should be treating each other in the same regard. This is Matthew 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And this is a context refers to like in the same day. And I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now his point wasn't that 490 is the peak of being reasonable. What he's saying is less math, more love. And I'm always for a God who encourages less math. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Roman monetary system, 
the Roman coinage was registered by a full day's work, that you would be given what was called a denarius, and a plural would be denarii. And if you were to assimilate enough denariuses, you would then like just if you got one dollar and you assimilated up to 20, you could exchange it for a 20 dollar bill. They had an interesting system where if you would work a full day's wage, you would get one coin, one denarius. And if you had enough denarius or denarii, you could then conglomerate them into a several thousand denarius, denarii measurement that was known as a talent. And 10,000 talents, that is millions and millions of dollars in modern day accounting. And as he was not able to pay, understandably so, his master commanded him that he be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and that payment be made. This is how debts would be settled. You would be sold into slavery, or you'd go into prison, where you would then labor and work off what you owed. But the servant, therefore, fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Now let's be honest. Even if he would start working with the efforts to repay his master, neglecting his own food, neglecting the support of his own family, rent, housing expenses, whatever, he'd never be able to pay this back in his lifetime. He should not have gone to Vegas, as Levi Lusco put it. And naturally, the master understood that. But... Hearing him beg him, the master of that servant was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him the whole debt, which is incredible. But what happens next? That servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Now note, this is by no means a small debt. A hundred days wages is a hefty sum, several hundreds, maybe even a thousand dollars. But understand comparatively to the debt he owed the original master, he's making the comparison. Yes, it is a substantial debt, but since you were forgiven, consider the facts, right? He laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, ready, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Now what should have happened here is he would have gotten his flashback and saying, oh, I should do what my master did. He forgave me, I should forgive you. I mean, it was a hefty debt I owed him, but you owe me a hefty debt too. But comparatively, dude, just forget it. But guess what? He would not. But went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. Now, <laughs> when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Then Jesus says, So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Note, not iniquities, just an inherent sin, but deliberate actions to hurt each other. Now note, the term that Jesus is using here, the whole point and punchline of this parable is not regarding losing salvation, but properly understanding it. That while a hundred denarii, yes, is a very large debt, it's nothing when compared to what has already been forgiven man, the servant, us, by his master. And you need to understand that when we have been shown mercy, when God has forgiven us on the basis of his grace alone, mercy by definition is not getting what you deserve. That's literally what that means. And we see this illustrated several times in how this principle, as Jesus demonstrated it in the Sermon on the Mount, and also unfortunately in this parable, also apply to the characters. Understand, just like Jesus emphasized, do good to those who would be called your enemies, who would naturally be called your enemies, water genesect showed mercy and obtained it as well from those it would normally call enemies, exactly like Jesus' standard in Luke 6. The genesect 
had an impression of people and others that if it's not those who stood at its side, it was its enemy. And yet he chose to show mercy. He had the power to destroy Ash and yet chose to have fun with him instead. Did Ash deserve it? It didn't know, but it chose to anyway. And by that same mercy, what happened? It was also given to it in kind. Mewtwo is another example. Wherever this Mewtwo came from, maybe they had the same idea as Team Rocket and engineered their own clone. I don't know. But Mewtwo had a lot of reasons to consider humans its enemies. But instead of looking in general terms and saying, because Team Plasma abused me, so I shall abuse all those who hurt me, who showed mercy to Genesect? Pokemon. And it was willing to extend the same mercy to Pokemon. And in the same way, it chose to show mercy to humans in the same regard. And guess what? By those it would naturally call enemies by following Jesus' standards set in Luke 6, it also was given mercy. It also was given help. Now, Red Genesect, unfortunately, is the cautionary tale in this story because it didn't receive mercy, nor did it ever show it. And when it all came down to a super subspace extreme speed conflict between him and Mewtwo, the only way for it to understand the value of mercy and forgiveness was for what to happen, for it to see things literally from God's perspective, from heaven looking down. Now, understand, just like the wicked serpent, horrible things have been done to Red Genesect by Team Plasma. And yet, it refused to grasp what Mewtwo understood. And it was that perspective that you need to take beyond your own anger. Now, what perspective was that? Well, for Christians, for believers, that if God has forgiven us an, an eternal debt, literally, you owe me infinity for your sin against me, and God has forgiven you, then by comparison, what are the things that have been done to us by each other? Even hefty crimes like rape, like violence, like anything that you could imagine, what in comparison could you call to your remembrance to hold against people if God chose not to hold infinite debt against you. Now on the other hand, for non-believers, understand that if you have been hurt by Christians, they were not Christ. That if Team Plasma hurt you, they do not represent the whole of humanity. They may owe you apologies. But what you need to understand is that you owe God a greater one. You need to understand the priorities of debts here. If you allow God to forgive you of your sins, he will give you the power to also forgive them. Because understand, I'll be the first to admit it, we as Christians, we mess up. We aren't Jesus 100% through and through. We aren't perfect and we are utterly ashamed of that being the fact. But we know when we see the Lord face to face, we will be perfect. We will be able to enjoy him and be able to enjoy each other without any selfish motives in between or in the way. And understand that is what we have to share with you is that we want you to share the same hope, the same peace that we ourselves look forward to, that we have been forgiven of our sin. And if you're not aware of it, understand you owe God an eternal debt. Whether you take it seriously or not, God is the one who is settling these accounts. And if you want him to forgive you, understand the last thing God's went, God wants is for you to have to bear the torture of holding a grudge. We all want you to understand what it means to not only know the one who forgave you, but also so that by that forgiveness, you could know how to show it to others the exact same way. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You show mercy, it will be given to you. You forgive others, you will be forgiven. But understand that God was very serious when he said, if you aren't willing to forgive, how could you expect me to forgive you? There is an imperative, because without it we're lost. But with it, we actually know what it's like to share God's heart. 
Thank you for your time and listening to this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If you have any questions or would like to know more about these themes discussed, leave them in the comments below. I always, always match sincerity with clarity. If you'd like to encourage the ministry, you know where to go. But most importantly, if you know someone who is familiar with these concepts but not their origins, who's seen this film but hasn't heard these messages, please share this study with anyone and everyone you feel would be blessed by it. Thank you for your time and listening to the study. And once again, remember that Jesus loves you and is willing and ready to forgive you if you are willing to ask.